Hi, my name is Becca Oaks, and I would like to welcome you here to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In this video today, we are going to be talking about how to create a reusable stencil using craft plastic. Why you would want to create a reusable stencil is if you are creating products or projects to sell, maybe you recreate the same project over and over again and you want to hand paint or hand letter uh, the saying or design that you're putting on your sign. And so creating a reusable stencil makes that super easy and effortless. Because I am talking about selling projects, I do wanna talk about our membership really quickly. Our yearly membership has a free commercial license, which means that you can use all of our cut files and fonts to legally sell projects with the commercial license and our membership. If you are on the fence about our membership or you're not sure about what Maker's Gonna Learn is about, I wanna invite you to click the link below, our $1 trial membership link, and see what Maker's Gonna Learn is about. Now that trial membership does not include the free commercial license that I just previously discussed, but it will give you an idea of everything that we have to offer here at Maker's Gonna Learn for you as a crafter. Now you don't need a lot of things in order to create a reusable stencil. You do need craft plastic, like I mentioned, and we like the graphics craft plastic. The thickness that we have found to be the easiest to cut and most useful and durable for use is the 0 0.007 millimeter. You're also going to need a deep point blade. So you can cut out these reusable stencils using your Explorer series or your Maker series. I also am using a standard grip mat that still has quite a bit of tack on it. If your standard grip mat has lost a little bit of its life, maybe try using another one because you want this uh, craft plastic to stick very well to your mat so it doesn't move around. In addition, I do have this Krylon Easy Tack. And what this is used for is uh, you spray it on the craft plastic once your stencil has been cut out and you can reuse it over and over and it just adds a little bit of tack to the stencil so that it doesn't move around on the wood or whatever surface you are putting your um, stencil on. Now that we've gone over the supplies that we're going to be needing for this project, we'll jump over into Design Space and I'll go over how to prepare your cut file or fonts to create your reusable stencil. So the first thing to think about is how big of a stencil you need. You definitely need to have a preset idea for what size you're going to be creating your projects to use with this stencil. So um, I put in an eight by three and a quarter. It, this is just a random um, size that I've put in blank shape from over here on the left hand side. So I just grabbed a basic shape put it in there, you need to size yours to whatever size you want. And then I inserted an, a Maker's Gonna Learn font. This is an awesome script font that is available to all monthly and yearly members. And if you grab that dollar trial membership down below, you can download this font as one of the 20 cut files allotted for you in that trial membership. This font is called Ballin. It is amazing, it's super cute, and it goes really well with another font that is Maker's Gonna Learn called Mary Catherine. So if you like to pair fonts with the projects that you create, these two would be great for you to download. So I have inserted this text box and I put the word welcome in. When you're creating reusable stencils, think about words that you're going to use over and over again, like home or welcome or home bodies or whatever you happen to be creating most of. Um, so I've typed that in. And one thing that I do want to uh, mention is that when you're sizing your wording, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of room around here so that when you're painting, you don't accidentally have like overlap on the top or the sides. You don't have to be super, super careful when you are painting that stencil. So size accordingly so that you have plenty of room. And then I am going to come over here and weld this text together so that it's all one layer. Right now, each letter is a separate la layer and I don't want that because I'm going to need to slice. And as you know, you can only slice with two layers at a time. So that would be this one when it is welded and now this layer. So I'll select both of these layers just like this. I'm going to press slice, and then I'll delete the slice results that I don't need. So I don't need this anymore, and I don't need this. 
this is perfect. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, oh my goodness, how am I going to keep these pieces in here? How is it going to translate over? I don't wanna to have to place those every single time. This is the trick to this particular tutorial that I'm about to show you. It's very easy, but it is essential. I'm going to grab a basic shape again, just a little square is fine. And then I'm going to size it down itty bitty teeny tiny to make like a little twig kind of like this. And then I am just going to place it here between this piece and the inside, just like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this and place one on each letter, just like this. You can duplicate again to do this part of the O. Duplicate, and to duplicate, I'm just right clicking and pressing duplicate. You can also duplicate duplicate layers over here. Now I have one more, my E, so I'll duplicate one more time, bring this over, and then I can select all of the pieces, come down to the bottom right hand side and press weld. So I know what you're thinking, how in the world is this going to look good? I don't want these weird lines when I'm painting, but what you're going to do is when you pull your stencil up, you'll just freehand and very carefully go in and fill in where these spots are. It's really not as agonizing and painstaking as you might imagine. Um, I imagine you're pretty crafty because you're wanting to create this reusable stencil. So I have faith that you can do it. Um, I'm not a painter and I have great success with it. We are finished creating this, this design here in Design Space, so now all I need to do is press Make It. I'm going to select that I will be cutting this material on my mat. I'm going to press Continue, connect to my machine, and then I'll select the material setting, the Transparency Material setting, by pressing Browse All Material and typing in Transparency, or just part of the word. I'm going to select that material setting and press done. Now I want to increase the pressure to more. So as you may see, it's telling me to load my fine point blade in clamp B and um, it doesn't give me the options to change the blade setting. I am going to go ahead and just put my deep point blade in the machine, even though it's saying fine point blade, so that we can get a great cut with this reusable stencil. So you might be thinking, how is this going to work? How am I going to trick my machine into thinking that it has a fine point blade, but it really has the deep point blade? And you may not know that the Maker Series actually doesn't detect those type of tools. It only detects the adaptive tool systems. So it's actually not going to know it's going to work perfectly. Um, now we can load our mat with our craft plastic and we'll cut this out. So I'm going to load this craft plastic in the top left hand corner. I don't know if you can really see it or not since it is clear. We'll just lay that down and then I'm going to grab my brayer and just bray this down so that it sticks very nicely onto my mat. Now I can load this in my machine, change my blade out and let it cut. So now I'm going to grab my deep point blade and just change it out. I do want to mention because I know we'll have several questions about this really adorable Cricut Caddy. This is a 3D printed Cricut Caddy made specifically for makers and the adaptive tools there. As you can see, I have everything super handy. This is from ZacariusEngineering.com. You can check out their website. It's amazing and you can completely customize these from the color and material finish. Um, they're amazing, really quick shippers. We have several of these and have given several of them away and have been very, very happy with these. That is a unsponsored plug, FYI. That's how much we love it. Anyway, let's grab our deep point blade, change this out. I put that in really quickly, but I do want to mention, make sure the housing is all the way down. You don't want it to be up here when you are trying to cut because it won't touch your material, it won't cut right. So make sure it's all the way down before you clamp. And now we can press our flashing start button. Okay, so it's always important when you're using a setting that's not intended for a specific product to check your product, check the cuts before you unload. So do not unload. Maybe grab a little weeding tool and see if your product or the material has cut all the way through. This one has not. So without unloading, I want to go ahead and press my start button again so that it will 
it will do another pass of cuts. Okay, once again, without unloading your mat, maybe just pull up a little bit of your craft plastic. It does look like we have a nice clean cut all the way around, so I'm gonna go ahead and unload my mat. And now I'm going to gently peel up the excess just to make sure that I don't need to reinforce a cut somewhere. So while this cut and this cut did really well, I have a little bit of a hang up on this side, so I'm just going to grab my tree control knife and reinforce that cut line right there. And then peel off, again, we have a little spot right here, which I was able to pull a little bit. I just cut that right there. In hindsight, I probably should have put it through with a third pass, um, or changed my blade to a new blade. So as you saw, the welcome part actually came up really well. So there were just a couple of little spots right there. And like I said, if I had changed to a new deep point blade, I probably wouldn't have had that issue. But it is finished. Um, cutting out, it looks really great. I wanna pull it off here. Just be very careful when you do that because the little stems that you've placed are very thin um, and you don't want to rip those. But once you're finished and have pulled this up, you can grab your um, your Krylon Easy Tack and you can spray the back of it and you can go ahead and use this to make a stencil on some amazing products for your customers. All right, we have finished our reusable stencil and as you can see, that didn't take much time at all, but will save you loads of time in the long run. As mentioned before, check out the link below to try our dollar membership if you haven't already. If you are not a subscriber here at Makers Gonna Learn, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you get notified anytime we go live or have a fun tutorial like this on YouTube. Like this video if you like it and let us know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. Thanks so much, have a great day.